sometimes we have a gold star week in terms of news. I'm talking about news that, that correlates so well with the Bible. And we're just going through a, a gold star news week. Today, what I want to do is have you join me as we do an interview with Brandon House. Uh, it's some exciting news that came out after the, the, the elimination of Sinwar, one of the leading terrorists in the uh, Hezbollah organization and in the Gaza Strip organization. It was interesting to see the response. The response was there was a, a, actually a, a missile shot at Netanyahu's house. There was a spy ring discovered in America as well as around the world, and then sacrifices in Israel. Well, I want you to join me as we do the interview with Brandon House, and then when it's done, we want to look at one or two other incredible topics. Can't believe all this took place in one week. You'll be glad that you saw the interview, and I think you'll be especially happy to stay tuned because there's some exciting news on the New World Order that follows the Bible exactly. Here's our interview with Brandon. All right, joining me now is Dr. Rob Linstead. Uh, Dr. Linstead, so much breaking news. I was going to have you right on at the top of the hour, but then we had to get an update from Aaron because of all the rockets coming in, the assassination attempt on Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, Israelis, um, some of them, seven of them at one point, m many minors being arrested as spies. The, you have the senior, senior Pentagon staffer reportedly leaks Israel's uh, Iran strike plans. Uh, it's just, and now we have now, according to Aaron, seven what are said to be Arabs that have been arrested as spies. It just doesn't quit. Uh, I wanted to get you on on some of these issues, but I first want to go to the one related to uh, Israel's um, eyes on winning war. With eyes on winning war, building third Jewish temple, ark replica shown in Jerusalem. I want to talk about this. We, uh, Aaron brought up the five red heifers. He, 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 think he saw someone in a restaurant last night connected to that project. And they were going to go there today to see the five red heifers, but due to the terrorism and the rockets coming in, that was limited. They can't go do that. But over the weekend, while I was studying for my series as I'm teaching through the book of Revelation, lesson 22 was on Sunday night. And by the way, Logan is loading all of those to YouTube. So when the rapture happens, unless YouTube pulls them off, they already took one down. They gave us a strike for which one? Lesson 11. What was I talking about in lesson 11? Medical misinformation. All right. Well, as much as we can get it up to stay up there, we will. We're also working on building another page outside of YouTube where the entire series will be archived because once the rapture happens, I want people to be able to find our teaching uh, to understand what just went down. But in my studying, I came across an article by my friend, Dr. John Whitcomb. Uh, I'm sure you knew John Whitcomb. He used to be on my broadcast every other Tuesday, and we did over 100 programs. He lived to be almost 100. But he wrote something very interesting in an article on the two witnesses of Revelation 11. He said um, that the two witnesses will not have to wait for the third temple to be built in order to begin sacrificing on a divinely legitimate altar on the present ruins of the second temple. What they will need is supernatural protection to reinstate the sacrifices as described in Daniel 9, verse 27. And to reinstitute the sacrifices in the presence of enormous, even global opposition. And he cites Revelation 11, verse 10. You know, that's very interesting because here we are talking about the red heifers and the temple and the, some of the rabbis are now cutting stones for the third temple. And we're wondering, are they going to begin temple sacrifices? They can put up a temporary tabernacle. You know, that's very interesting by John Whitcomb. None of this may begin until the two witnesses show up. And you and I believe, as does John Whitcomb, that those two witnesses show up in the first half of the tribulation. One reason the Lord himself has told them when the, you see this hour of uh, uh, you know, the uh, blasphemy of the Antichrist setting up an image in the temple, speaking words of blasphemy, and this, this um, uh, you know, uh, abomination Get out of Jerusalem. Get out of there. So Dr. Whitcomb gives many reasons, but one of the reasons he lists why he thinks these witnesses show up in the first half of the tribulation is, why would they stay when God's just told everybody that's Jewish and to get out of there? So there's a lot of reasons. He gives more reasons than that. Isn't this interesting? 
what we may not see any sacrifices happening until the two witnesses show up. But if you have the desire for a temporary tabernacle, you have the five red heifers, uh, you have all of this going on, what may be in preparation here is for the two witnesses to show up and take uh, custody of some of these things. Your thoughts, please? Well, I think it's interesting. First of all, they're called two witnesses. Uh, I, I want to I mention something about that. Then I want to circle back around a little bit because I believe that we're watching Israel have three things are converging together right now. One is uh, the war. Uh, tr incredible progress has been made in the last 72 hours. And one of the chief rabbis there says that, that on Wednesday morning, uh, it's going to begin and end the, the Gog Magog war. I mean, that's, that's how uh, imposing this war is. Number two, uh, the biggest crowd ever at the Western Wall, over 50,000 people came there at the end of Sukkot. And, uh, and so there's a, an incredible interest in beginning sacrifices. And they just unveiled today at King David Hotel uh, a replica of the Ark. And this replica of the Ark, they've been working on it three and a half years. I think the thing that's interesting is that the Bible says in Revelation chapter 11 that after 42 months, so that's three and a half years, and we know that after three and a half years, that's when the Antichrist does his devilish work. The witnesses, who, what does it mean when you're a witness? I, I, think, I think it means that you, you don't call yourself a witness if you, if you heard about an accident that occurred two blocks away. You're a witness if you're there when the accident occurred. So what are they the witness of? I believe that Amos chapter 9 says that the, the sacrifices began with the tabernacle of David, not the temple. A lot of people would disagree with that, but if you read it carefully, uh, Amos chapter 9, it says the tabernacle of David. When David was around, he had a tabernacle, a temporary building, it wasn't until Solomon that a permanent building came. So I believe that the sacrifices are going to begin not when they build a temple. I believe it's going to begin when they begin to sacrifice. And I think it's going to be made with skins of animals, sheets of material. It's not going to be the permanent building. I think there will be another temple. And I think that will be the millennial temple. But I don't think there's going to be one as you begin the tribulation. Next, the witness. What, what do they witness? It's interesting because... Let me, let me just interrupt you right there. I'm sorry. Let me make sure okay. I understand you. You're saying you don't believe there'll be a temple until the tribulation starts. Yeah, I, I, I really believe that that's the order because I find several places in the Bible that, it, that talks about the tabernacle of David. And, and David didn't have a permanent building. So I think it's going to be done so quickly that they're going to say, let's start. We have the opportunity to start. Let's start right now. And, and I know they can erect a building pretty quick, but it'd be a year or so or six months or a year or two. And something as special as the tabernacle, believe me, it's going to be done very wonderfully. So I, I don't think it's going to be a temple to begin with because it uses the word tabernacle and, and the Bible always uses precise words. So when he says, uh, and, he, and it's, this is in Amos 9, let me, let me see if I can put my thumb on exactly the reference so that way people can, can go and check it. And um, uh, it says, uh, verse 11, In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches of it. I will raise its ruins. I will build it as in the days of old. So, so they construct this tabernacle of, of David. I know it's for this time because it talks about in the desert, the, the plowman's going to overtake the reaper. That's taking place in the desert right now. It says the way, the way cities will be rebuilt. 23 cities have been torn down. All of them said they'll be rebuilt. All 23 are back. Uh, it says that they're going to plant gardens in the desert. And it says I'll no more remove them from their land. Those are all things that they were watching take place now. So that's why I'm one that you know, people tell me all the time there's the rocks in Indiana they are going to ship for the temple. They don't need rocks in Israel. They've got rocks. Mm -hmm. It's going to be done so quickly. The opportunity is going to be there so quickly that they're going to start this process. And I think the two witnesses precipitate 
that process to begin. And because of that, they're going to be hated by the Antichrist and they're going to be hated by the world. So let me so stop you there they again. Finally, kill let, them. Let me stop you in there the again. middle of the tribulation. It says that they send gifts to each other. It's called Happy Dead Witnesses yep, Day. Yep, yep, yep. Let me stop right there real quick. Music's playing, but we'll come back to this. So are you saying you believe there'll be a temporary tabernacle while the third temple's being built? Is that what I hear you saying? That, yes, that's correct. And that you do you do agree with Dr. Whitcomb that those two witnesses could begin those sa sacrifices in that temporary tabernacle, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe for sure they will. Do you, so do you think the sacrifices will not occur until those two witnesses show up? I think that, well, no, the sacrifice, it says, and this is in Hosea chapter 3. It says in the latter days, they return again to sacrifice. So you believe that the, the sacrifices will not start until the two witnesses show up and they do this in a temporary tabernacle, is that right? I, they could begin, but I think the witnesses are going to do theirs in, in a tabernacle, a temporary building. Here's why. Hosea chapter 3, verses 3 and 4, it talks about, says the children of Israel are going to be many days without a king, without a prince, without a sacrifice, without an image, without an ephod, without a teraphim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return, seek the Lord their God, David their king, and shall fear the Lord in his goodness in the latter days. So in the latter days, they come back to do sacrifice. They've had no sacrifice for a long time. That's true today. That's what the Temple Institute is trying to bring about. That's what the red heifers are about. But I think when it finally gets time for them to say, okay, you can go up on the Temple Mount and not just pray, but you can go up there and you can do a sacrifice. I believe the excitement is going to be so great that they're not going to wait for a temple. They're going to take a, a temporary tabernacle and they're going to do that temporary tabernacle and they're going to begin the sacrifices. Now, the Bible doesn't say whether they begin before or after the tribulation, but here's what we know that whenever the sacrifices do begin, the Antichrist is going to stop the sacrifice in the midpoint of the tribulation. So if you say the midpoint of the tribulation is, is three and a half years, it's interesting that Revelation 11 puts the death of the two witnesses at the three and a half year mark. Hmm. All right, so with all of that being said, uh, it looks like things are lining up. I mean, again, we've got China and Russia and the BRICS, and then we got Xi Jinping and Putin meeting. Uh, we have uh, what looks like I'm gonna have Gordon Chang on tonight again because the, the Xi Jinping is uh, wearing, looked like military fatigues, telling his people to prepare for war. Now he's done this more than once, but now he's wearing these military fatigues. Uh, they are increasing their exercises. They just did one surrounding Taiwan. We have North Korea threatening South Korea. We have what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. We have what's going on with Israel and um, Iran. I mean, I I've said it before, you have World War III and then you just have a war of war, a war, world of wars where wars are just everywhere. Uh, it all seems to be lighting up to me, the stage being set. Does it not to you? Yeah, the, the convergence of all these things, you know, uh, it, here in our country, we're, we're concerned, we're so overtaken with this election. And I'm not saying it's not important, but I'm just saying that if you, the, the time clock for God is Israel. And so if you look at Israel and exactly the right nations by name are there, uh, Israel is going to do something that's going to make them very unpopular. Uh, and I, I think one of it has to do with the fact that, that they've said, okay, we're not going to continue to have people threaten our leaders. If that occurs again, then we'll, we'll take something down. I do think that it, there's a strong possibility of, of taking the nuclear reactor. For sure, the oil. And the oil refineries, I, I don't know what they're waiting for. Um, I sent you a clip earlier. We, we probably don't have time to play it today. But, but it's, a, it's amazing to see that Israel has in their possession uh, a place in Beirut. And in this place, they, it's, it's lined up right under a hospital. They, they know that there's at least a half a billion dollars in shekels, dollars, and gold. This is, this is used to finance the war, rather than blow it sky high, they're, 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 they're trying to do it systematically. Plus, they've warned the people that live in this region of Beirut, leave now, leave now, because 
because sooner or later we, we've got to stop this. We cannot allow this, this cash flow to continue to send missiles into Israel. Uh, the, the timing, the, the convergence of all these things, the biggest interest in sacrifice, the world getting ready to change a money system, uh, a change of leaders in America, and as you say, the brink of war all over. I mean, China fired on, on Burma today. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the video there. I mean, this is incredible. Think about the intelligence. And at the same time, the, 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 the cork that tops it all off, how many double agents have we seen? Uh, uh, you know, uh, America leaked secrets to Iran. There, there's so many potential people that could have done that. But isn't that sickening? They, they care more about some dollars in their pocket than they do about the protection of our country. And we're getting word, uh, word that this person may be an Iranian American in one of the offices of the Secretary of Defense that leaked Israel's attack plans on Iran. We have so many enemies inside our own government right now, Dr. Lindstead. Oh boy, it's frightening. Matter of fact, you know, again, while we're watching this take place around the world, uh, I know someone in Israel said that he thinks that there's a thousand the, he, the number is a thousand terror cells in America right now because of what we've done with the southern border. If you can go back to that picture, mm -hmm. uh, that, that picture is incredible. Uh, of all the scumbag things, <laughs> underneath the hospital, there's a whole city. And, and in the caverns, I mean, these are beautiful rooms. They have shekels dollars in gold. But what do they do? They, they put it under a hospital and it, it, they identify the, the two openings that, that take you under there. So so what Hezbollah has done, they put their weapons, they put their, their bank account, they put everything in a hospital or a school. If anyone doubts their sincerity, uh, take a look at that. Who in their, who in their right mind, who, who love their population, who would ever put that over a hospital? Or who would ever put it over school? They did, because they felt like, okay, this is safe. So we'll we'll put our half a billion dollars. And by the way, that's not the only bank they have. They have several banks. And some of that, uh, matter of fact, uh, there's another, I don't think I, I sent this one to you. But if you go to Rafa, not only do they find hundreds of thousands of dollars, but right there on the supplies that was feeding uh, Sinwar and his, and his cronies, is UNRW, the, the United Nations relief workers that we complained about a year ago. We said, how, how come there's two or 3,000 people? There's another example of spies. These, these relief workers went all over Israel, supposedly giving relief, no, giving the, the exact location of soldiers and of people. That's right. Uh, the we, UN. We gotta close the UN down. Yeah, the UN is, I believe, a terrorist supporting terrorist organization. BibleTipNow.org, BibleTIPNow.org, BibleTIPNow.org is the website. He will be one of the keynote speakers coming up at our Ozarks Worldview Weekend on Friday night, November 1st. People are still registering. You can do so as well. WVWTVStore.com, centrally located in central Missouri. Thank you for listening. Take care. And we're back with our WROS station in Florida and on Worldview Tube and with Dr. Rob Linstead. Uh, Dr. Linstead, what other big issues are you watching today? I know you sent me several more. Um, you sent me one that was related. Let me bring it up here. You sent me one that had something to do with a, a bunch of them collecting on a mountain. What was that one? Um, Full dress Cohen sighted on Temple oh. Mount. The Cohen. The, these are like your, the, yeah. the, the Jews with the last name Cohen, right? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Cohen, of course, is a priest. And uh, and just to show you how far this is going, you, you know, when we first started talking about red heifers, mm. uh, you know, a year or so ago, people thought we were crazy. Yep. And, and then we actually showed a picture of the red heifers, and then they thought we were only semi-crazy. But this fever has taken off in Israel. And so, so this week we had the biggest crowd at the Western Wall in, in its history, 50,000 people. But there's a group of Cohens, and uh, there was one in particular, and he dressed up in exactly the, the Cohen uniform. There's some that are, they're not on the Temple Mount itself, they're, they're uh, adjacent to it. But there's actually one who actually went up on the Temple Mount in Cohen activity. And, uh, 
And they're talking about how that, that this is incredible because for 2,000 years, this is what they've been waiting for. And so that's how the headline came, winning the war, building the third Jewish temple, and an ark replica shown in Jerusalem. This replica was so incredible, they took it to the King David Hotel. That's, that's the, the prince of all hotels. That's, it's the king of the, all the hotels over there. And uh, they gave a lecture. It took three and a half years to build it. 71 people were consulted to make it exactly, uh, well, here's what it said. We call it a replica, but it can be used today because they think it's that accurate in terms of its dimensions and so on. So take that with the fact that here are these Cohen's and they're, they're dressed in their priestly garments. Uh, they're, they're going up on the Temple Mount to pray. They, they've battled and fought for that. They can do that now. But their whole thing is in wearing the garments. They say, yeah, we want to begin sacrifices as soon as we're able to do so. And so they see the war ending, uh, the replica being revealed, uh, the, the chance to go up on the Temple Mount again. They, they just see this as, wow, all these things are coming together. They don't know what they're coming together for, but I, I really believe it's the rapture of the church because that will allow that tribulation to begin. Mm, mm, mm. And of course, these are all very interesting times. And, and yet this is exactly what we're supposed to be doing, watching for these signs and watching what's going on with Israel. And yet you got guys like uh, Rick Warren saying when it comes to Bible prophecy, God says it's none of your business. And yet, you know, <laughs> he says that. Can you believe that? He wrote yeah, it in one of his yeah. books, wrote it in one of his books. And yet, you know, there's a special blessing that comes to those who study the book of Revelation and seek to understand it. And this is what we're doing. Uh, but yet here's Rick Warren telling everybody in his books, uh, Bible, prophecy is none, Bible prophecy is none of your business. Uh, yeah, so interesting. Uh, I talked to um, someone over the weekend who goes to a church that believes that all of this happened back in AD 70. Um, Small problem here. Uh, the book of Revelation wasn't written until AD 95, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So if you have the book being written in AD 75 telling you these things are coming, but it actually happened in AD 70, you got a real big problem. Yeah, the, the, it's a predator's point of view. And uh, wow, it's, it's just, uh, it certainly doesn't leave for the future because John writes about things that are future. Yes. And uh, so, wow, it, it, and not only that, if that's the case, then the, the seven-year tribulation period, well, that's gone. Uh, how about the thousand-year millennial period? Where'd that go? That's gone. Yeah. So, and, and how about how so about if, Satan being bound and you know and yeah. and 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 and, and every, there's no interruption. I mean, I think I'm seeing more yeah. demonic activity on the planet probably now. Never has such demonic activity occurred on the planet as is happening now since the time Christ was on the planet. Would you agree? Well, if yeah, absolutely. Matter of fact, I see it in the political arena. I believe that I, I look at time past. I think there were leaders that were that were demon influenced, demon possessed. I believe that I, Kamala I think Harris. Some of that now. I believe Kamala Harris. I said it yesterday. I'm going to say it again tonight on TV, and I said it last night on TV. I believe her immediate visceral reaction to those kids saying Jesus, you know, is Lord, Christ is King. That immediate visceral reaction to me was a demonic response. I, I like to well, know if she, as, not, a, as a as a Hindu yeah. or as an Indian, and, has she been fooling around with Kundalini yoga and invited a demonic spirit into her life? And then to have the nerve a few days later to appear to church yep. and have the preacher say, you know, you were raised up for this time. Wow. To compare her to Esther, I, it's it's really a disgrace. Indeed. You know, indeed. if if indeed uh, the Protestant point of view is true, then then the millennium has lasted almost two millenniums <laughs> instead of one. And and if Satan was bound, then he must have a twin brother because <laughs> the demonic activity is so acute that I think that there must be a twin brother running around well, somewhere. Well, if, if Satan has been bound, uh, uh, who keeps letting him loose, right? Yeah. Uh, BibleTipNow.org, BibleTIPNow.org. Thank you, Dr. Rob. My pleasure. Good and to he, see you. Uh, you too, my friend. He'll be with us at the Ozarks Worldview Weekend along with all the others. Get registered. WVWTVstore.com. WVWTVstore.com. Centrally located in central Missouri. A day's drive for most of you. Don't miss out. Take I told you you would enjoy that interview. We get so many questions about sacrifice and to, to see it making the headlines and to have it connected together. The, the end of the war, the replica of the Ark of the Covenant, 
the Jews swarming toward the Western Wall and wanting to be up on the Temple Mount. The, the Bible is being fulfilled in our lifetime before our very eyes. But there's a, another news story that, that was so important this week, and it has to do with the New World Order. Matter of fact, it's incredible. One of my favorite uh, signs that we use in some of our presentations are the, the creatures from the book of Daniel. Daniel, remember, describes the New World Order. He talks about every world power that, that's going to rule in, in Jerusalem. And the, the lion, of course, is the, the Babylonian kingdom, and the bear up with three ribs, that's the Medes and the Persians, and Alexander the Great, the leopard, and, and then the end time, the end time dragon that has ten heads. How, how does that come to pass? Well, let me tell you this, that, that in the Bible, it's very clear, in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, it talks about how that it says this, that in these days shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. That kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces, consume all these kingdoms. It shall stand forever. And we find that it's a stone that actually hits the image in the feet, the legs, part of iron, part of clay. And so how incredible that, that we would have a, an, a great representation of how the New World Order begins. It begins with this 10 King Federation. And lo and behold, this week, of all things, we had something called the BRICS Conference. Now, originally the BRICS Conference was gonna be a summit on economics. There is a number of nations who are tired of America being number one. And so they would like to, to derail us, dethrone us a little bit. Sometimes I think the, the enemy comes from within. But nonetheless, Leading the, the surge is Putin and Russia. And BRICS stands for this economic conglomeration. Some countries from Africa, Brazil, uh, Iran, of course, is part of it. And you know what? You can almost list about uh, half the countries that are in it hate America. So what they're trying to do is to, is to establish a new economic form. But what's interesting is they don't stay with economics. They go to religion. They go to politics. They even go to the Middle East war. We've been watching as the retaliation is expected for Israel to go back against Hezbollah for, for trying to bomb and to assassinate Netanyahu. Everyone thinks Iran is next. And it would have been, but a spy ring came. This news is all breaking this week. So let's talk about this new world order. Here's Putin. As they begin the, the BRICS summit, he says this. It shows a new world order is emerging. He uses the very words. I remember the first time that phrase came out, I was actually in the audience when President Bush used that term. And many of the religious broadcasters stood up and applauded this new world order, but several of us sat there and said, what are they applauding for? And, and afterwards we got together and said, wow, this is what the book of Daniel says. This is what Revelation says, this new world order. And so predicted by Daniel 2,600 years ago, established by the prophet Ezekiel 2,600 years ago, the same nations that are coming against Israel, I'm talking Russia, Iran, Turkey, this, the Bible names them. We, we've been studying them for, for the last month or two, identifying the, their, their claim to eliminating Israel. Now we have an economic forum. And so here's Putin, and he says, a new world order is emerging. Well, he's not done. Matter of fact, here he is. He's going to welcome the leaders. And you'll see the, the subtitles in English. He'll be speaking in Russian. I want you to see this. I want you to see how incredibly beautiful, extravagant the room is in. But notice this. It's more than economics. He will speak of religion. He will speak of, of politics. He'll speak of control. Here he is. Listen to this very important clip. This took place just this week. потенциалом. При этом нас сплачивают общие ценности и мировоззрение. Справедливо будет сказать, что БРИКС включает в себя единомышленников, суверенные страны, представляющие разные континенты, модели развития, религии, самобытные цивилизации и культуры. 
Все наши государства выступают за равенство, добрососедство и взаимное уважение, за утверждение высоких идеалов дружбы и согласия, за всеобщее процветание и благополучие. Did you catch that? Way more than economics. He talked about religion. You see, at the end time, there's a, a fake religion. It has nothing to do with God. It has more to do with, with us, with, with, with people, humanity. Notice the BRICS organization. They're, they're taking in countries that have resources. They're talking about energy and how to control energy. They're talking about how to control the world. Listen, my friend, the Bible says the last human government that will only be there for one hour, Revelation chapter 17, verse 10. For one hour, they'll give all their power to the Antichrist, and the Antichrist then will, will go against the Lamb of God, and the Lamb of God wins. But we're looking at the formation, I believe, of the last new world order, the last government. At the same time, the Bible speaks of those who come against Israel, and he names Russia, Iran, Turkey, and so on. It's incredible to see these people sitting at the table making discussions not about economics, but about control of the world and about how uh, there's a new way forward, a new world order emerging. Well, here's that book of Daniel again. Here's Babylon, Medes and the Persians, Alexander the Great, the, the iron legs, Rome, and then the feet, part of iron, part of clay. Ten nation federation. My friend, these are the pictures that depict the book of Daniel, the, the book of Revelation, as it speaks of this new world order coming together. It's the toes. They only rule for a short hour. Then they give their, their power to this beast. We see in Revelation chapter 17, the, the harlot, the false religion riding the beast. My friend, this is taking place before our very eyes, exactly as the Bible said. Revelation chapter 13 speaks of the Antichrist, a, a headed monster that has ten horns. There it is. Could we be the ones seeing the Bible fulfilled before our eyes? I think we are. Now, let's go a step further. The United Nations recently divided the whole world into 10 regions. We're watching these regions sit around the table at BRICS. Unbelievable. I, I'm excited to be alive at this time. I'm excited to, to be able to say to people, look, the Bible is coming true exactly as, as it was written. It's coming true. Now, take a look again at this meeting because when BRICS met, they officially, listen to that, officially condemned Israel and calls for the immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Wait, economic form? No, political form. Taking a stand, the New World Order taking a stand against Israel. Do, do you understand how important this is in terms of seeing the Bible fulfilled? The Bible's accurate to the very word, to, to the very uh, sentence we're watching this take place. Unbelievable. I want you to see the beauty, the elegance, the, the splendor of it. I've been to Russia several times. And I know that often they have a, a scroungy looking building on the outside, almost like a barn or an old brick building warehouse. But inside they usually have one room that's really fixed up great. This happens to be it. Look at the gold, look at the, the beauty, the splendor of this room. And then watch as they, as they welcome the potentate into the room to begin the BRICS meeting. Here we go. They open the golden doors. Putin, the potentate, one of the officials from, from the uh, Arab countries comes. Notice they stand in, in reverence to him. The, the splendor of the room, it's, it's, it's spectacular. They sit down to business. Economic business? Well, yeah, some economic business. I'm not denying that there was an economic business going on there. But I can tell you this. They talked about religion. They talked about controlling the people. They talked about a ceasefire in the Middle East. Yeah. See, it's, it, it's way, way more than just an economic form. That's what the Bible says. In Revelation, there's a new Economic system, Revelation 18. There's a new religious system, Revelation chapter 17. There's a new political system, chapters 17, 13, and 18. My friend, the Bible, the Bible's being fulfilled before your eyes. How, how do we live in these last moments knowing that we're watching this grand scenario take place? Well, here's another idea that came out of BRICS. Look at this. Iran's president, who was there at BRICS, he goes to the members of BRICS and he says, we need to help end the war in Gaza and Lebanon. Now, wait a minute. Economic form? 
but, but they're dealing with, with a ceasefire. Why would Israel want to cease fire? Matter of fact, if they really want to cease fire, then have Hezbollah stop firing rockets. Has Hamas stopped firing rockets, there will be a ceasefire. But over 9,300 rockets have come into Israel in the last two weeks. An assassination attempt on their, on their prime minister. And they want a ceasefire? The, America asked for a ceasefire in Rafa. Biden did. Kamala did. The UN did. And we took out Sinwar, one of the worst terrorists in the world. Matter of fact, they say he has more blood on his hands than any other person other than Hitler and Stalin. If we would have ceased fire, he would still be around killing people. So the new world order, its order of business, is to correct Israel, to, to promote a ceasefire when they're still firing rockets at it. My friend, it's never going to happen. Well, take a look at this. Russia says it has no intention of abandoning Iran as it faces Israel's wrath. So because Iran backed the firing and the assassination tip, Israel said, yeah, we're coming after you. Matter of fact, they, they were probably going to come this past week. But a spy and a leak occurred. But Russia says, we're not, we're not going to abandon them. We're going to be their faithful friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Isn't it what the Bible says in Ezekiel 38? Russia, Iran, Turkey, Tagarma, all, all coming against Israel in the last days. At the same time, the background is Israel was wanting to sacrifice. My friend, these things are all converging together. What an exciting moment. Then, here's the Turkey president coming. Uh, what's amazing, look at the steps. As you look at the steps, 2024 bricks a special stairway just for them. They come. My friend, every nation mentioned coming against Israel in Ezekiel 38 is present there. The enemies of Israel trying to do damage economically, physically, war, they're, they're all there. Folks, this is unbelievable that we're watching this take place in real time, in our lifetime. We are watching them welcome the president of Turkey President of Turkey takes a, a, a very aggressive stand against Israel. The Bible says that when Israel is invaded by Russia, Iran, and Turkey, they'll come out of the north. Have you seen the position of Turkey on the map? Directly north. The Bible's accurate right to the very moment. Then one more item that came out of BRICS. Breaking news. Russia and Iran just commemorated made a $1.7 billion arms deal. Yeah, Russia will help them get their nuclear power plant going. They will continue to supply munitions to Iran for missiles. and trade, Iran will give oil to, to Russia. My friend, do you understand that BRICS is way more than an economic forum? It's helping to establish a new world order. This just took place this week. It's just now concluding as, as you're watching this program. Unbelievable. Here's... 30 countries that were there. What well, used to be meetings where America would be leading the way, we have no leader to lead the way. We, we've been left out. Economically, we've been left out. Israel, uh, and the United States, we're, we're left out in the cold. The Bible is coming true before our eyes. Well, here's something that, that I think is an added flavor. So let's just take a, a quick look at this. Listen to this clip that was announced this week. A war and you have your Americans, uh, Carlos, can you imagine anything like that? Did you hear this? You know, they leaked all the information about the way that Israel's going to fight and how they're going to fight and where they're going to go. And Somebody, who did that? Can you imagine somebody doing that? That's, that's the enemy. I guess that maybe is the enemy from within, as I talk about. We have an enemy from within. They hate to talk about it. Well, it's an embarrassing moment for us. Because you see, as Israel gave information to the United States about how they were going to attack Iran, that information went directly to Iran. So that's how come they knew there was a spy within. Matter of fact, more than one. In this current administration, there's at least three American Iranians who, who so far have proven they cannot be trusted. But there's another one. And, and this one is... Actually, the, the whole story is outlined in a letter. One year ago, they asked for her to be removed. Here she is. She's the top uh, aide 
to the Pentagon. And, and she's an Iranian. And now, again, it looks like she's leaked classified information. Why is this person serving in our government when her loyalty is not to America, it's to Iran? It's got to stop. Other spies were caught this week. Incredible. This is taking place. You see, the devil uses deceit and lies and double crossings. He's done it all of his life. It's in our governments. Matter of fact, my concern is this. They believe in the Middle East, they believe that we may have a thousand terrorist cells all associated with Iran in America right now. I don't know about you, but do you trust them? No, their loyalty is to Iran. Well, look at this. Breaking news. Israel delays Iran attack after U.S. leaks of documents. Yeah, they had to change their whole plan. Oh, believe me, they will retaliate. They will retaliate for going against uh, trying to assassinate Netanyahu. But they're not going to tell America next time. You see, the Bible says that America will turn against Israel. All the nations will. And we're watching it take place. I think the crack began as we watched this BRICS meeting, as we watched the spy ring come to pass. My friend, there's a lot of things taking place. I've tried to cover a lot of those in a book. It's called What's Next on God's Plan? The raptures explain the tribulation, Armageddon, the, the place of the millennium, the great white throne judgment, even the new heaven and the new earth, how do they fit together? And so I go kind of verse by verse or topic by topic through the book of Revelation, 183 pages, charts, diagrams, other things that will help you understand the Bible and to help you understand that we're living in the last days right now. So what should we do? Well, I'd like to ask this question. Are you ready? First of all, have you received Christ as your personal Savior? If not right now, admit to God that you're a sinner and that you're not good enough to go to heaven. Matter of fact, there's only one person good enough, and that's Jesus Christ. And he took my sin. He took your sin. He went to the cross. He died. He shed his blood, and he rose again so that we would have a Savior. My friend, accept him now. That way you will be ready. And then if you know Christ is your Savior, what should we do? Number one, share the gospel. This is the great time to say, the Bible's coming true, my friend. Listen to what's taking place. Look at what's taking place. Read what the Bible says. Share the gospel with others. Secondly, I think it says this, pray for opportunities. Daily, I pray, God, lead me to people that might be searching for the truth. Lead me to people that think we need a change. That change can be found by accepting Christ as your personal Savior. And then next, stand firm. Yeah, there's an enemy within. We, we're fighting a battle against spiritual wickedness in high places. God has given us an armor. The armor of God explained in Ephesians 6, but the commission is stand firm. Continue to stand firm for God. And then wait expectantly. Do you know Christ could come at any moment? Think about all these stories converging together. Some of them written 2,600 years ago. The nations attacking Israel, right on course. The new world order, right on course. The economic disasters in the world, right on course. The sacrifices that Israel wants to make, right on schedule. My friend, we're right on schedule. Jesus could come at any minute. I hope you're ready. Thank you for joining me today. We look forward to seeing you next week, unless the Lord comes. Have a great weekend. God bless you.